Vision. Welcome to the D-List, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. Wait, I just got that. <laughs> That's very amusing. So, Animaniacs was a great show. It's time for Animaniacs. I hate to be yet another list on the internet that panders to 90s kids' generational superiority complex, but I don't think it's just nostalgia to say that Animaniacs was one of the best animated television shows of all time. It managed to successfully translate the spirit of Golden Age Looney Tunes to a generation shaped by The Simpsons. The show was far more than the sum of its parts, and even if it hadn't been, its parts were pretty amazing. Blending gorgeous animation, top-notch comedy writing, and a supremely talented and supremely friendly cast. Yeah, this interview was a year ago and I still kind of can't believe it really happened. But the part I'm going to focus on today are the songs, which range from the educational to the satirical to the flat-out absurd to the all of the above. I'm not going to include theme songs for segments, great as they all were. I'm looking at the songs that were either musical numbers within a segment or the focus of their own shorts. Here are just a few of my favorite songs from the classic animated series. Prepare yourself. There are some totally insane earworms ahead. Numbers 13 through 15, Yakko's World, Wacko's America, and Yakko's Universe. Okay, I can't choose between the three of these, the songs which set the tone for Animaniac's educational side. A side which sometimes seemed shoehorned, but didn't drag down the segments that were purely comedic. Yakko's World and Wacko's America are remembered particularly fondly, and in the grand tradition of Tom Lehrer's The Elements, they put an educational list to a familiar public domain tune. It's easy to be dismissive to the amount of work required to do that well. The educational list needs to fit the rhythm, the cadence, and the rhyme scheme of the tune you're using. Yakko's Universe is more of a lecture than a list, which means they fit more actual jokes and references into it, such as using Mickey Rooney as the benchmark by which all human size is measured. And rather than Tom Lair, this song's primary influence seems to be Eric Idle. And while I do love it, I'll always wish the bosses had let them go with the original ending for the song. There's a great everyone's a part of it. No one knows just where's the end or start of it. We all live here together. It's our home forever. It's a small world. Number 12, Do the Schmooze from Hooray for North Hollywood. Some Animaniac songs are educational, some are satirical, and some manage to be both. This song mocks the insincere self-promoting networking of Hollywood, where getting on the right people's good side is more important than actual talent, and passive-aggressively talking others down is the way to talk yourself up. It mocks it, and yet it's a pretty accurate primer on it. I don't know whether to take this song as a how-to guide or as a warning to run far, far away from this state. So I'll just compromise and take it as a really, really funny song. Is that my pager or my cell phone? Number 11, Macadamia Nut. Animaniacs love to parody and homage classic Hollywood, the cinema and pop culture that its viewers were far too young to get, but once in a while they targeted something a little more current. And if a popular tune is gonna get stuck in your head anyway, it's always refreshing to have more clever lyrics to go along with it. And this song functions equally well as a takedown of the original song and a character song for Dot, specifically focusing on the shorter side of her temper. It's also a tribute to the whole ensemble, giving everyone a chance to dance. Each line in this song sounds pretty much the same Oi, macadamia! Number 10, Schnitzelbank. The Warners learn a traditional German children's song from a different Dr. Otto, and while they play along at first, it doesn't take long for their chaos to completely envelop the proceedings. As much as the classic Warner Brothers animation was the show's biggest influence, Yakko, Wacko, and Dodd also owe a huge debt to the Marx Brothers, and they faced off with many Margaret Dumont's along the way. Dr. Otto here may just be a one-off, and he may not have quite the lovability of their more regular Dr. Otto, but he still has the perfect short fuse for the Warner shenanigans. Boy, some international friendship song. Number 9. Only One of You from Hooray for North Hollywood. While Animaniacs was never an outright cynical show, it didn't shy away from a bit of dark and cruel humor. Characters would be trapped in endless cycles of defeat, someone was always suffering for someone else's happiness, and insults flew aplenty. So it was nice to once in a while get a catchy, optimistic, and uplifting tune like this one. Although it does come out of nowhere, like there's barely a segue into it, Yakko just says, hey, let's sing a song now, and the completely unrelated comedy scene that was going on just sort of stops, and then the song happens. 
That's not really a point against the song. It was just placed in the episode weirdly. Number eight, Hello Nurse. The character of Hello Nurse wasn't really much of a character for most of the show's run. She was a blonde bombshell in the tradition of Tex Avery's bombshells, who mostly just existed so the boys could drool over her. And in this song, well, she's still portrayed as the object of one of the boys' desires, but at least he acknowledges that she's more than just her looks, that she's actually a fascinating individual with numerous talents and interests. Yeah, she's still basically being objectified, but it's kind of a step in the right direction. But this song's real heart and soul is Jess Harnell as Wacko. Wacko didn't get nearly as many solos as Yakko did over the course of the series, but man does he deliver here. His voice is a perfect match for this song's classic big band style. And he sells it so well that the song has to actually remind you that the character is a child. Too bad I'm only seven, cause hello nurse. Number seven, Video Review. Man, I remember when this song was current and relevant. Now it's a surprisingly nostalgic look back in the days of the physical video store. Sure, you could do the same basic song about browsing Netflix or Redbox, but there's something different about walking down the aisles, your eyes panning across a seemingly endless sea of movies, many of which you've never heard of. Or maybe I am just pandering to my own 90s nostalgia at this point, I have no idea. Anyway, this song lists a bunch of movies available at the video store. Some of them, they describe the plots fairly accurately. Some of them, they just mash up titles to make up new nonsense plots. I don't know. It's funny, and it references movies. I like it. Number six. Never Give Up Hope. The opening song from the direct-to-video feature Wacko's Wish, which transported Animaniac's enormous ensemble to a poor village in a far-off kingdom. Much like Only One of You, the message of this song is an uncharacteristic but welcome salute to optimism. But more specifically, optimism in the face of a dire and cynical situation. And most of the humor in the song comes from that dire situation and the suffering it reinforces, but Wacko's refusal to be dragged down sets the tone for the whole film. The Warner siblings were never characters to get bogged down by needless sentimentality, but that doesn't mean they were incapable of emotion. And this song established the movie's emotional journey. But it also makes sure that it doesn't get in the way of the jokes. Life's so lousy, we can no longer cope. You gotta cheer up and never ever give up hope. Number five, The Wishing Star. Also from Wacko's Wish, this song begins the Warner's quest for the Wishing Star. First, the Warner's on their own sing a simple but catchy and upbeat original tune with some clever lyrics. But then the rest of the village starts to wake up, and well, what's classic animation without a little Hungarian rhapsody? It's a funny and narratively effective tune, setting up every character's goal in a short piece of time. Are you pondering exactly what I'm pondering? All things are but just how will we get the weasel to host Number four, the songs from A Hard Day's Warners. This is one of those cartoons where I just didn't get the joke when I was a youth. I mean, I wasn't confused. I didn't even know there was a joke I didn't get. I didn't realize that it was such a very specific parody. I just figured, hey, the Warners are running around. It wasn't until I came across it probably a good decade and a half later that I realized what an amazing tribute the whole short was to A Hard Day's Night. Gags, scenes, and roles from the first Beatles film are all referenced here in a warnery way. And the two biggest Beatles hits from the film are parodied. When the film's title song is turned into a proto-literal music video detailing the Warners escaping their hordes of fans, hiding behind bags, and, even inside garbage cans. and Can't Find Me Love is turned into the Warners' mantra for what a cartoon should be. They want to laugh, laugh, they want to laugh. Technically, these are two songs, but they're both short, and it's the use of them together in the context of this tribute to a movie the show's ostensible target audience doesn't know about that pushes them from amusing to brilliant. So I say these songs go together and are counted as a piece of the same whole. Number three, L.A. Dot from Hooray for North Hollywood. And now a song that's better as a standalone, devoid of the context in the episode. And it's from the same episode as Only One of You. The songs in Hooray for North Hollywood rank among the series' best, but quite a few of them don't fit into the episode quite organically. I mean, this episode has a sequence where the Warners are going around LA, and that's not when this song happens. I do wonder if when developing this episode, the brilliant folks behind the show just wanted to throw in every song they hadn't gotten around to doing yet. 
but even if its purpose in the episode itself is a little unclear, on its own it's a great, funny, catchy song, and I'm glad it exists no matter what the reason. They get so much mileage here out of a pun that only kids in a very specific radius in Southern California would comprehend, but while municipal system wordplay might be the concept of the song, the driving force is Dot's ego. Her bravado and false modesty are what make the song so funny, and of course the whole thing is held together by the captivating singing voice of Tress McNeil and the masterful wordsmithery of Randy Rogel. Could see that they love L -A. Dot. Number 2. Just the same old heroine from Jocahontas. Man, other animation studios love to be bitter about Disney. I would think Disney would have been more bitter at Warner Brothers at this point, since Amblin's partnering with them for these shows was the reason Disney had to turn their plans for a Roger Rabbit animated series into... this. Ah, no wonder you like that bonkers show. That junk's rotting out your brain there. Still, if you're gonna make fun of the mouse that overshadows us all, it helps to be accurate and it helps to be funny. The cracks in the Disney Renaissance formula were starting to show around this time, and the Warners peeled those cracks open as far as they can go. All within a legally distinct song with lyrics that would still fit perfectly and hilariously to the tune of the song they're mocking. It worked once, why not again? And my number one favorite Animaniacs song, Variety Speak. Another song that educates about Hollywood while satirizing Hollywood, the Warners translate the crazy headlines from Variety into normal talk, making producers walk, and casting a light on the business side of show business. This was a song concept so brilliant that they did it twice with different lyrics. The second time in, you guessed it, Hooray for North Hollywood. Although this was one of that episode's more organic segues into a song. And both versions of the song are equally brilliant and essential. Really, if I listed all of my favorite quotes from the two versions of this song, I'd just be covering the whole damn song. So just look them up, listen to them both, get them stuck in your heads, sing along with the clever, clever lyrics. Well, those are all stuck in my head again. At the same time. It's weird. So, what are your favorite songs sung by those wacky Warners? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.